Okay, so my really big secret, and this may take two videos, maybe even a third one, because there's a lot I want to talk about, and I've tried to record this before and cut it short so it makes a one minute on Instagram, and that's not going to happen. So when I returned in 2011 from Iraq, like so many other soldiers returning, I just felt lost. I felt lost and out of place, out of place, out of time, out of meaning. Like, I just didn't understand what I was doing. And I tried, like, I, I was right back in going back to college. Um, and, and then, you know, you have all this type of stuff going on. Like, like the why, like, why is everything happening to me like this? Why am I feeling so distant? Why, why did my life have meaning? <laughs> three weeks ago and now it's just empty and this and this is emptiness based on being with the people you know that I loved in my life my sons and um, a woman who at the time I was married to and you know and my family was there my dad was still alive and and it just didn't feel like anything because I, I lost what what had mattered for the last year of my life and and I had had this huge growing experience, this huge experience in life. And I come back and everyone is treating me like it had been a year before. And I wasn't doing well. You know, I, I was drinking myself to sleep almost every night. Um, I was having these terrible panic attacks, you know, that were rising up that, that could be caused by anything, including the dogs. Because I worked with bomb dogs while I was over in Iraq, and all of a sudden a dog sitting down or a dog uh, searching for things like would then cause this triggered reaction to me, and I made a decision. I made I made a decision that I was going to kill myself. That um, that was what made the most sense, and it wasn't a decision made in total despair. Like, sure, I felt down once in a while, but I I wasn't what I knew to be depression because understand like years before in 99 I buried my sons you know I know what depression looks like I know what it feels like I know what it feels like to go to bed for months at a time like that's depression you know that's my depression and that wasn't what it was it, what it was was this here I had the opportunity to have two life insurance policies from the military that I could have a suicide clause with that then I could kill myself and leave my family with money because not only was uh, my my drinking at night my feeling not connected to things that was not doing good for me and it wasn't doing good for my family and on top of that um, I had, had been injured while I was over there and it was like one of these unknown injury type of deals and I didn't understand why I was gaining weight and and um, you know my sexual life was not working anymore and all of this stuff just, I was like, what is this quality of life that I have? The best thing for me to do is leave it all, leave, because I, the only thing that I can give to my family, right, is money. You know, that's what I'm believing in my life, that money was the only thing that I could give, money and then leaving them. And I started having conversations with my wife about it, you know, it's time to go. And clearly, like, the, I'm, I'm thinking about this, it's going to take me two years. Like, this is the whole thought process through this whole time. And um, finally, she helped me see, you know, that, that, that my killing myself was not going to be the best thing for my two sons. And, okay, so yeah, like that's, that made sense. You know, they, they were young and fragile and the likelihood of, of, uh, of kids who kill themselves grows exponentially if they have a parent who kills himself. So... I decided to stay for them. And I, I was getting some medical help, realizing that my pituitary gland had uh, stopped functioning while I was overseas after getting uh, smashed in the head really hard. And um, and then I, I had success, you know, I was having success in the, in the writing world, but that success didn't feel like anything. And in fact, for me to get in front of a camera, for me to get in front of behind the microphone to do the podcast or to speak at a conference or something like that, oh, conferences are bad because, you know, like all those extra people that just, just spiked my levels, my PTSD would just like shoot off and like, I just am in threat analyzing everything and it's just terrible. 
And so my quality of life was not improving. And yet I was deciding to stay. And that was really hard. And, um, and it's because, uh, because of this, you know, suicide was always there. It was always in the back of my mind that that was, uh, that was an answer. That was a way out. As everything fell apart in 2017 for me, and, and I did have a really hard hit of depression because I slept a majority of July because everything was gone. I was, I was losing my marriage. I was uh, losing my job. I was losing the, the military. My health was getting much worse. Um, and no one seemed to be willing to help me. And that's one of the things, you know, I was learning, you know, you've got to be willing to help yourself. That's unless you're like in the most dire straits, you've got to be willing to take care of yourself. And I finally, and I met a counselor, <laughs> I got a new counselor and he was terrible. Like he, he had answers for everything just by be, you know, without even having the full story, he's coming up with stuff and they were not good answers. And I didn't even ask for the answers. I just wanted to talk to him. I wanted him to understand my situation so we could have real conversations. However, there was one good thing that came out of the sessions that I had with him. And that was this, is that he, I was, you know, talking about this, the decision to, sui to have suicide and, and to, you know, holding back for my family, and for my kids. He said, I don't care. I don't care if you kill yourself or don't kill yourself. But... If you're going to be here and you're going to be alive, you've got to take suicide off the table. It can no longer be a contingency plan. It can't be a plan B. It can't be there at all. And because he's basically was telling me to choose life for me, which honestly was not something anyone had ever told me before. My entire life I had lived for other people, you know, in the service of others. And by this point, you know, this was just in 2017 is when I'm talking to this guy. So I've been home for years. And I was growing very bitter, very bitter of the people that, you know, that I loved. And because I was blaming them, right? We all have our excuses. I was blaming them for my own problems, you know, for why I, I wasn't successful, for why I was being held back, for why all these things were happening. And that kind of being that kind of person that, that hurts people, it hurts people a lot. And, um, and so at the end of 2017 and recommitment in 2018, I gave myself a gift, the most important gift that I could ever give myself. And that was to make a decision to choose life. And not to choose it for my sons, not to choose it because it's the morally right thing to do, not to choose it for anyone but me. And that decision, that decision to take this off the table, to remove it, it's no longer a contingency plan. It really has changed everything. I don't have to, I don't have to drink and caffeinate in order to get in front of an audience. I, I can be myself. <laughs> I like me. It's been tough. Like <laughs> I took a, I took a couple of months off from drinking and, um, I didn't like me very much at first. I was like, goodness, these are a lot of hours to spend together. And, uh, but things, things improve and just spending more time with myself and understanding that Hey, it's okay. And that's why this stuff matters to me. This is why I want to share it with you is because I want you to live a life. I want you to live a life that's yours. Because when you choose to start living for you, all the other bullshit goes away. It makes the hard stuff easier because you've got the right mindset. It makes it easier to get up in the morning and smile, which I do. I smile every morning when I get up. When I wake up, I, I put that smile on my face because this right here, this is infectious. It infects the people that you're around and it infects you. And I'm excited for the next 40 years. For, for really, honestly, the first time in my life, I am excited to live to see where these next 40 years take me. And I don't have the plan entirely. 
Over here, I've got my 20, uh, what is it, 2028 20, and 2023 on the board, and I'm, I'm jotting down some ideas about lifestyle and looking at things because I'm looking long term. I'm looking long term with excitement because I want to know where I'm going in life and I want to make it the best I can make it. So this is, this is what I want for you is to make a choice to live the best possible life you can for yourself. Choose life or choose death, but make the choice for you because no one can make it for you. And you have to choose for yourself. And I hope, I hope that this is not your option and definitely not your plan A. But if it's your plan B, if it's your contingency plan, the, the ripcord you're going to pull out at the last moment, get it off the table. Because when it's off the table and no longer hung around your neck and no longer riding on your back as a parachute, that things change. It's working without a fucking tightrope. <laughs> or it's working without a net. And it will make things better in your life if you choose to live for you.